Welcome to Oracle for Startups, where I talk to startup founders and innovators like today's guest, Gilbert Verdian, the CEO of Quant Networks. Gilbert, thank you for joining me. Whitney, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So tell me about Quant. What does your solution do? So we're an innovation company and, and we're all here to make the benefits of blockchain accessible to everyone. So it's, it's a big mission. Um, and what we're doing is we're building products and solutions and networks to enable enterprise and businesses to really create and generate opportunity and have a more inclusive society. Where did the idea for Quant come from? Do you have an interesting origin story? Well, yeah. Um, so the idea is uh, I've got a 20-year history in uh, cybersecurity. Uh, so I've been at the technical level and the sea level. Um, and so during the financial crisis uh, around 2008, I was in the government, in the treasury, and I saw the first paper on blockchain probably two or three weeks after it was released. Uh, and it really interested me. So, you know, I did something about it, got the rest of our government on it. So the UK was the first country to look at uh, blockchain officially. Uh, and I started working on it in the background because it really interested me. And, and, you know, moving into other departments around 2015, I had a problem with the way uh, blockchain was evolving. People were building the technology in isolation. And that was not the right way to do it for mainstream adoption. And uh, so I started talking about how to interconnect all of these proprietary networks, all these siloed blockchains using like an overlay. And, uh, and then that's when I established the ISO standard for blockchain. So it was a great way to bring harmonization um, through ISO and uh, allowing vendors and technology providers to create the technology that will talk to each other. And that's what led to Overledger. So having that platform for interoperability so you can have different types of blockchains, internal, external, permission, permissionless, to be able to interoperate and talk to each other. So you mentioned government, public sector. Who do you think has the most to gain from this technology? Yeah, I think it's one of those technologies that's quite transformational. Um, so we're seeing aspects of blockchain being used in pretty much everything. You know, I think financial services is quite ahead. Uh, they, they were one of the first sectors to uh, start looking and experimenting with the technology. So we're seeing a lot of traction and most of our customer base is in FS. And, and that's that's my background coming from payments and, and financial services organizations. Uh, and I think it's now being adopted um, and spreading to be quite broad. So we're seeing other sectors uh, around supply chain, sustainability, um, you know, provenance, identity, et cetera, being used for blockchain use cases. Um, and it's quite exciting because as, as I was saying, this technology, it doesn't come around often and this transformation doesn't come around often. It, I think the last time we had this big impactful change was dot-com era, you know, about 20, 20 years ago. So we're, we're right in the middle of this new type of digitization and tokenization that's happening around digital assets that everyone's adopting. Yeah, I think the financial sector uh, use case makes a lot of sense. But are there any dream customers that you have or use cases that you're excited about outside of that? Um, yeah, I think what, what we're seeing is uh, the, the inclusivity of uh, different customers and consumers. Um, it, it is more specific to financial services, but one of the projects we're working on is creating the Latin American dollar. And, and that's basically an interbank network uh, for 12 countries initially. It's, it's done by the Inter-American Development Bank with a whole bunch of partners. And we're building this infrastructure and basically upgrading all of these nations to modern payments infrastructure. So they can actually do real-time payments, they can do exports, you know, person-to-person -person payments or, or SMEs exporting things and getting paid in real time and really improving the lives of people and giving them access to better money, better payments, and helping them grow. So it's, it's quite a nice use case for what we're part of. You kind of just answered this question, but why would a consumer, a lay person, be excited specifically about the interoperability in a blockchain? So what blockchain is making possible is for your money to be global and, and be able to roam with you. And you could take your bank accounts anywhere in the world 
and use it across different systems, different networks, different countries. So it's quite exciting from a consumer perspective because it gives you access to your money in a new way, but it also allows you to um, kind of control and program your money in, in a new way. So some, some use cases are if, if you're getting a, a delivery um, and you want to make sure that it arrives at 6 p.m., you can actually program that to say, if this delivery arrives at 6 p.m. and I'm happy with the, the, the quality of the goods that I received, then release the money. So it doesn't automatically, it, it's not binary. I mean, you can add some logic to it. So that's quite exciting. And having your money travel with you all around the world opens up new opportunity, new payment products and new ways consumers and businesses can serve the market. There are obviously huge implications to this technology um, and you're partnering with Oracle for startups to scale up. Can you tell me a little bit about how that experience has been? Uh, it's been it's been quite beneficial, I have to say. We, we, we started about two years ago with Oracle. Um, we came into the program. Um, we, we were warmly welcomed. So it's been quite nice and having a, a family within Oracle to deal with. Uh, it is quite a large organization, as, as everyone knows. Um, and we've been through the whole process, you know, right to the end. And we've actually graduated from the startup program. So I think August, we, we ended up, um, you know, graduating. And what, what actually has happened is we've met lots of different types of people within Oracle, uh, introduced to different types of customers. Um, we've been, you know, deploying our technology within Oracle Cloud, so OCI. But more importantly, we've actually created a new partnership with Oracle. Um, so our product... Uh, so Overledger is our, is our technology. So Overledger is an API gateway that allows um, anyone to build and benefit from a multi-DLT solution. So you don't have to be picking one or another blockchain. You can use all of them with our technology. So this partnership has basically allowed Oracle to certify us um, and our technology to be used for Oracle blockchain platform. Um, and that's quite amazing for someone our size. You know, um, we're, we're able to access the, the Oracle customer base. We're, we're working very closely with the product team, with, with OBP. We did a webinar together about a month ago um, and we jointly presented and showed the tech working within Oracle. Um, and OBP is a, is a great way for us to scale. And uh, you know we're getting new customers and we're working even, even more closer with Oracle as a result of that. It's a great example of the mutually beneficial partnership that it gets formed between a startup and an enterprise. I know from my perspective, every time we share a story about quant on our Twitter feed, our timeline goes crazy. So people are clearly very excited about both the partnership and quant. So what is, in your opinion, what's the future of blockchain? I think um, the future is quite ubiquitous and blockchain would be integrated into various applications and use cases that we use. The, the same way, you know, Qualcomm or 4G or 5G chips are used in your phone, you don't know what they are. They just allow you to connect to the mobile network. Um, but blockchain will allow us to connect to all of these blockchain networks and to transact securely. Uh, the financial services sector is, is maturing and transforming to use digital assets. So money and different types of assets will be interoperable and they'll be global so they can roam across all different countries and, and networks. Do you think we'll ever be able to vote by blockchain? Um, I think it's it's starting to happen, but it's linked to identity. So if, if you if you look at the security sector and identity and access management, it's been quite a pain point for enterprise and, and for consumers. You have multiple logons onto different systems. Your data is across all these different databases on site for that particular company that you're using. Then we had federation, so allowing one com company to recognize your identity on another. Um, so that's evolving. So what's happening is decentralized ID. So basically, instead of your identity being located on hundreds and hundreds of companies' databases, you're bringing the control back to you. And, and so what's happening is the consumer is, is having their own identity. You can control authenticate and authorize who sees your data. But at the same time, it's a verified identity, which allows you to do you know, one application to your bank, one application to the government for a change of address, and everyone knows about it. So from a voting perspective, credentials and identity and verification are all being built into this identity store, uh, which is based on blockchain technology. So you can carry your identity and control it and use it for various authentication and authorization. So voting is a definite use case. 
I love the potential for blockchain and especially what Quant is doing with interoperability and the partnership with Oracle. So if people want to learn more about Quant, where should they go? Uh, the best place is uh, www.quant.network. Um, come and reach out. We'd, we'd love to chat. We're, we're, we're quite a friendly bunch. Um, and uh, Or get in touch through Oracle. You know, we work very closely with Oracle partners and, and account teams as well. Excellent. That's a great point. If people want to learn more about Oracle for startups, they can go to oracle.com slash startup. Gilbert, thank you so much for joining me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me.